Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, mm-hmm. take that midweek break, talk about some of the things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan and everyone watching us know. live at home. How's it going, Jill? We're back for another oh, week. Yes, we are. We got it's things so to much do. fun. Things yeah. to talk about. <laughs> Lots. We, we even found an excuse to bring up Irix this week. Yes, we did. Which and means that... and that's just like the side loads. Like, so we get to talk about SGI, right? I'm like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We do. So I ran into something. You know, I think maybe we go through this, uh, depending on how run, long you've been running Linux and whatever, you go through like your uh, conversion phase where you're trying to, like, hey, you should run Linux and Linux is great. You know, Linux can do no wrong. You been there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you might still be there. Some people never grow out of it. <laughs> They're just constantly, you know, uh, just like, have you heard the good word about our Lord and Savior, Lydus Torvalds? And the fact is, <laughs> Linux isn't for everybody. This is true. Yes. It's, it, it's <laughs> not. And I, I've always been something I've always uh, tried. And I, I, not always. That's a lie. That I've learned <laughs> over time, that I've grown and I've matured with, as if you're going to be showing somebody how to, if you know, if you're bringing Linux to them, you are forever going to be responsible for that person, or at least you should be. You know, don't just come by, drive by, drop Linux on them, change out their PC, yeah. and run off. <laughs> True. <laughs> because you just made somebody who's really not going to like Linux for a long time. You've just caused damage. You didn't help Linux out at all. And it's okay to tell people. It's okay to tell people. Like, hey, man, Linux might not be for you. And the reason I bring this up, you know, I do the interfacing, interfacing Linux series, right? Mm-hmm. And I'd done one um, for like a Behringer device. And I think it was USB FireWire combo device, uh, the FCA 1616. Okay, right. Leave a comment this week. And, you know, it wasn't like a rage comment at all. But, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I get to this point. Part I've been using Linux for 20 years, which I highly doubt. Let me be honest. With you. Um, and he couldn't figure out how to configure it. And uh, he says, trying to do this is going to make me go back to Windows. And I, re- I just wrote him back. And I'm like, hey, man, that's probably for the best. And I mean that. Yeah. Well, if he'd truly been using it for 20 years. Maybe. Know, you you <laughs> want to say that, but well, you, yeah. know, you know people that have been doing stuff for 20 years and still have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, because yeah. I know somebody's going to bring that up, and I'm like, yeah, they're. Um, but then again, you might not have ever played with a jack, and I, I still True. think Linux is still geared for people with that curiosity bent, people who want to know, people who don't have a problem doing some research. You know, the idea of just plugging things in, everything's just going to work for you automatically. Mm-hmm. I don't even think Windows is the right operating system for you. Maybe you want to go try to go for a Mac or an iPad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or something like that. But yeah, I, I still stand by. There's nothing wrong. You know, maybe that comment was made in hopes of me trying to convince them to use Linux, but I don't care what mm. operating system you run. I want you to run the operating system that's best for you. And it sounds like you might, Linux might be a little beyond like your wheelhouse. Maybe, maybe go back to something a little easier, something more consumer oriented. So there's my little meandering thought for this week. Joe Bryant, yeah. how about you? Are you getting ready to go back <laughs> to yes. a corporate overlord <laughs> mouse dictator yes, to tell you house. to have fun or elks? Yeah, so I'm going to Disneyland again tomorrow with Steve Husband to meet up with a friend and podcaster who is flying in. So that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. This is our, our uh, monthly or bi-weekly <laughs> trip to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it. And going back to Ven's comment, I just wanted to say it just so happens, Ven, that I have a mug today that I'm drinking out of, and it's got a kitty cat on it, and it says curiosity is more important than knowledge. So I thought that was appropriate for what you were just talking about. <laughs> to an extent, I agree with that. Uh, stay curious. <laughs> Always stay. You never lose. Yeah. <laughs> at any age, don't ever let that die inside of you. That makes me. Yeah. So sad. I mean, Mm -hmm. it really does. Is I'm I'm not going to bring anybody down, but 
when you run into people who talk about what they used to do and what in the past, in the past, in the past, in the past, and all this other stuff, like what happened? Did you yeah, did you lose your curiosity? Well, yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't mean that in a negative. Why, well, I did to, uh, to me, it just makes me say, like something that's tragic has happened to this person, or they've stopped. You know, because you know they never talk about what they're doing next week or the big projects, or and that mm-hmm. always depresses me. So yeah, always stay curious, and you know, just it doesn't have to be about Linux. It doesn't have to be about technology, man. You could yeah. be on the forefront of quilting technology, and we can still hang out. Oh, absolutely! Because I like to hang around with curious people. Mm-hmm. So stay like that. Keep yourself healthy. Mm-hmm. And also make sure you run Wayland because we're getting rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Fedora, this is big news. Fedora plans to drop X11 and go all Wayland when Plasma Six comes out in the Fedora KDE Plasma Spin. And if this proposal is approved, it won't come out until the Fedora 40 KDE Plasma release, which will happen sometime around late April 2024, along with the main Fedora 40 release. And one of the many reasons for X11 being deprecated in the Fedora KDE Plasma 6 release is that the Xorg display server has been deprecated since the release of RHEL. 9.0 9.0 in May 2022 of last year and will most likely be removed in future major rail releases. And we had talked about that here on LWW quite a, quite a few months ago. And Fedora is also the upstream of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And also, Wayland is now Go figure, Wayland is now being actively updated, unlike <laughs> X11. And developers have spent years working around X window systems bugs and issues since the Unix days. And wow, let's face it, 1984, <laughs> it's old. <laughs> and you know, this, this was really you know, amazing news. And I, we saw it coming. We definitely saw it coming because you know, Fedora has a great track record for spearheading technology forward in their distro and has already been offering Wayland as default in GNOME, and, but you could always switch back to X11 when needed in the login manager. So that, that's been there for a while. And yeah, so, you know, this all makes sense. And also the creator of Wayland uh, worked for Red Hat. So, <laughs> so this definitely makes sense. It, it's time, you know, it, it, Let's it's time. Run on, switch to Wayland, <laughs> do everything and go, oh, right. It's almost ready for prime time. Almost. <laughs> almost. That's, that's what I want in a production system, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> almost. almost. <laughs> I look forward to tracking down all those almost problems and going, hmm. Yeah. I thought it was ready. Almost. <laughs> almost. I said almost ready. So when it breaks and catches on fire and knocks down your back door and runs out screeching into the night, never to be seen again, remember, <laughs> I said almost. Look at you with your silly X11 with all the bugs hammered out of it. Yeah. With its stable code base. <laughs> yes. It, it doesn't do this new thing that almost works either. I know. That's yeah. cool. I don't want that thing. <laughs> <laughs> For me to completely switch, I need my window maker to work, although X Wayland will help with that. And XFCE, as Mir said in chat as well, uh, needs to be fully converted for for me and Ven to be happy as well. <laughs> I need a list of stuff. I can, I'm yeah. flexible when it comes to um, window manager. <laughs> I take it or leave it. Why do I use XFCE? Because it works. It gets out of the way. You know, we're going to be talking about motif um, mm-hmm. later on. And CDE, and that, that's where I come from. I, I don't care. I, I, I don't care if like my windows are surrounded by juggling hot dogs. As um, long as it works, it's quick and it's efficient, it stays out of my way, that's what I'm going to use. I don't want features on my desktop. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Keep it simple, too. <laughs> so, I even like, heck, I leave it in like rat poison. I sometimes like not using a mouse. <laughs> at the end of the day... <laughs> Wayland is going to happen. Like Wayland's in yeah. motion this time, but it, it's it's still moving slower than I. If you would ask me three years ago or two years ago, 
when when Nvidia finally bent the knee, I'm like, fine, all right, we're gonna. I'm like, here we go. The ball's still rolling at a glacial pace comparatively. And things still need to get hammered out. More people mm-hmm. need to come over to it, and things seldom True. break until they encounter your particular use case. So I always encourage yes. more people to get out there and play with it and make it work. And I didn't even bring it up. Somebody brought it up in the comments uh, on our YouTube last week. And like, what about barrier? I'm like, there's another one, right? Yeah, there's um, another one. Yeah, that's very important because a lot of the IT people use it. <laughs> and you know, whether or not it's a security issue, but the ability for me to SSH into a box with X11 forwarding on my local network, invaluable. Because mm-hmm. you you show people that, and they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, there's no latency, and you can do um. Deferred jail rendering too, so you can run your jail. I mean, I can play yeah. a game, but I can run DAWs, web browsers, and things like that from machines that are next to me or in the basement. And over a ten gig network, you're no difference. Mm-hmm. So uh, things like that, and we got PipeWire needs to mature. It's getting there. It's getting there. And you remember, yes. PipeWire handles your audio and video, right? Uh huh. Yes, and and they're starting to make more strides on the video end too they're really they're trying to clean up all those bugs on the audio side we're just in a i don't envy red hat the Buntus or whoever i don't envy but this has to happen we mm-hmm. gotta you gotta start pushing people Moving away from forward. x to get them onto the whalen yeah as much as I love xorg and x11 i have no love for x11 <laughs> you know? I've, I've been fighting with you know what, what it, <laughs> I, no. I I loved oh my my first introduction a lot of people's to Linux was when running xfree86.config <laughs> you know this this is that as valid thing. today as it was back then um, <laughs> the xkcd hashtag 963 general satisfaction with how my life is going time since I last had to open xword comp yeah <laughs> yeah that. <laughs> <laughs> my first, not really my first week, my first week, oh man, I guess that is topical. My first week with Red Hat, that weekend was set getting X work up and running because the video card I had, there was just no hope. And we're talking about trying to find monitor documentation because these are CRTs because we had to punch in numbers to get this stuff. And I borrowed a video card from a friend that might work. And it was like, I think it might've been like an ATI something, yeah, whatever. And, Oh man, that Sunday evening, it took two days of playing with it back and forth, and I finally got X up and running on Linux. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking like 1996 kids, so Google yeah. didn't then, exist. It was a little harder. Well, then technically that was X11. Xorg didn't come along till like 2008, but I, I, I say it inter- interchangeably well, too. Well, I said so. X386. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had X386, which became yes. Xorg. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and um, that's what we used to have to add it back there. And it wasn't XORD config, it was X386 config. Uh-huh, that's what I was saying earlier. <laughs> so. Yay! Yay, Ben! <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's going to go away. But not for a long, long time. And I'll say it each and every week. Nobody likes to hear it, but this is a true. The hardest thing to beat is good enough. Mm-hmm. And X11 mm-hmm. is good enough, especially if you're doing yeah. content creation, multimedia oh, gaming. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. X still got that. Why? It's just legacy. I mean, it has those 30 years. And mm-hmm. just because something's not being actively now, if you get a new laptop, you got new things going forward? Maybe. Maybe. But all the stuff that you would need for day in and day out, I mean, that's done. I'm not telling a single person to use X11, but I'm also reminding the people that are running around going, X11 is dead. And I'm like, now it's in maintenance mode. That means it's done. Yeah. There's yeah. a difference there. I like done. True. That's the reason I use Jack for my sound server. Why? It gets updated once a year. <laughs> Maybe. Sometimes. Why? Done. That's what I like in my code. Now, Plasma 6, and then again, I mean, this is going to affect you um, if you're running oh, KDE, yeah. and you're, you're a special type of serial killer if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about something near and dear to our hearts. Yeah, Ben, this is cool. People of a certain age. Um, back in the 90s, PCs had style, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they were, you know, there was a lot of innovation there in the design of computers. I have many unique designs in my collection from computers from that era. 
I mean, they all look the business, and one <laughs> that you've definitely seen, no matter what your age, because you know this has been like oh the a little bit of a girl like I wants ones, and they're kind of uh, achieve. You know, if you were a '90s kid, an '80s kid, you were one of these. You probably just bought one. and was like, I have one now. Why? Because you lost it after them when you were a teenager, early twenties, and you probably didn't have forty grand to go drop mm-hmm. on an indie or an Octane. That's beautiful. Or an that Onyx. Silicon graphics machines. <laughs> SGI, and you're like, oh man, these things are so neat. And mm-hmm. you know, when I think about SGI, I think about SGI. I immediately start thinking about, fortunately, like YouTubers are like reviving these, trying to keep them up and running. And I'm watching that as like watching the cavemen around the monolith trying to figure it out. I'm like, oh, this is cute. They have no idea how that works. But when they get it figured mm-hmm. out, I'm like, good on them. I, I, you know, I'm cheerleading. But I think about the boot chimes playing around with the um, SGIs yeah, those were cool. back in uni because <laughs> they were typically like little chords, musical chords. Yeah. But uh, the indies had the best one. They had like four different options that you could get in the uh, prom monitor. And one of them was like super. I can't find it. I searched mm-hmm. YouTube last night, and I found like all I the know, standard that's boots, amazing. all of the okay. standard boot chimes. But I couldn't find but any of the alternate one. ones. Um, and you had to know to even look for those. But another thing, you lost it after was an SGI monitor, uh-huh. <laughs> which was something. It, it was inconceivable. Let, let me show you how easily impressed we were. Let me show you how easily this, mm-hmm. this, yeah, you would have sold out yeah, a family flat. member to get your hands on one of these. Yes. <laughs> the SGI 1600 SW, which, you know, 17 inch LCD display. <laughs> it was pretty cheap. It was only about $4,400 if you convert that to 2022. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1600 by 1024, 60 hertz, 24 bit color. 25 by 16 aspect ratio. <laughs> oh, man, you you walked over Lust somebody's over house like that. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> so there were, the, the hardware was part of the love affair people had with SGI. And, you know, to a lesser extent, Sun hardware. Uh, and people want to bring back the operating system. Yay. For SGI. And that was known as IRIX. IRIX mm-hmm. was famously multiprocessor that was one yeah. of its big things it was like how many cpus do you want to tie together and it could do it but irix hasn't been updated for mm, 15 years I 15 think. 16 something like that yeah somewhere in there and there's never I, I guess this was like really surprising almost impressive there's never been like a totally source leak or anything for anybody to go through like the closest like strangely Strangely, most of uh, any type of reverse engineering work from SGI has been done thanks to the N64. Because mm-hmm. there's been yeah, a couple Nintendo of N64 64. games that have yeah. been reverse engineered to be, you know, bit perfect. And you can recombine them, clean room re- reimplementation, and, yes. you know, be able to poke around for that. Well, some crazy, crazy people want to reverse engineer the kernel, reviving a dinosaur. Two decades after its final version, the Silicon Graphics community has deep hopes in bringing the platform operating system back. This is a nice little article from tedium.co. You can find the links in our show notes. That's a proper desk. Look at that. We got air cleaning. Yeah. We got the uh, external <laughs> CD-ROM drive. We got some and Coca Colas. <laughs> oh yeah. man! And um, so, what do they want to do? What do they want to do? Let me tell you about this. They want to raise about sixty-five hundred dollars to do technical documentation, just a clean room, write this thing out, figure out how to get the kernel up and running. And so they could, so that tech doc can be used as a base for an open source IRIX derivative kernel, just to have that for posterity's reasons. You know, it's going to require a clean room reamp. And again, no code leaks exist. So this is not going to be cheap to do. And I, I wish them the best of luck with it. I, Mm-hmm. I have to assume, you know, because that would be IREX version 5.3, which would be the last one, 32-bit, which is going to be maximum compatibility. Like, what about 64-bit? Yeah, I understand why they're going with 32-bit for that. And um, yeah. yeah, wish them the best for that. I mean, some people, I can't imagine 
any reasonably sized uh, shop still running SGI anything in production, but uh, just mm. to play around with it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And just to have a, have a newer version of IREX, you can run on modern machines and, and see how, how much power you could get out of it. In the article, they uh, talked about how uh, some of the oceanographic companies were still using SGIs because they don't mm. have the money to replace them. <laughs> and, and they have all the, the data for the topography of the ocean's floor are already, you know, that, that works on the SGI machines. So they don't have millions of dollars to replace them. And, and that was interesting. Well, they don't need them. I, I they know. can replace it with a... Um, let's see, with MIPS compute, probably Raspi 3. Ras yeah, well, this is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> they just <laughs> haven't gone through the process, I guess. <laughs> That's so always true. a... I'm sure if you're like in your 20s right now, you'll get there. You'll get there. You know, once you're in your 40s yeah. and your 50s and you realize like, oh, right, you, you can replace that with a calculator these days, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So for me, you know, IREX actually has a very special place in my heart because I learned Alias Wavefront 3D animation software, which is now Maya. I, I learned um, Wavefront on SGI machines. And that's what the, the industry standard was at the time. Everyone used SGI machines if you were animation. And a lot of the people I dealt with with my animation business used SGI machines. So I had to learn Alias. <laughs> And it's a wonderful piece of software. And I also still have in my vintage computer collection, my Silicon Graphics Octane computer and Indigo 2 workstations. My Octane, I fired up not too long ago and it, and it it's still powered up. So I was happy to see that. But it would be nice to put, you know, maybe a newer version of Irix on that machine or, you know, just on newer machines in general. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the octanes were pretty interesting. If you were around at the time and um, involved, the indies were dumpster fire little machines. Uh, I was like, wow, why do these things exist? I'm sure if you go back and read any, if somebody's like archived reviews of indies, they were like the affordable SGIs, but they were useless without uh, the graphics accelerator, which cost more than the indie itself. Yeah, yeah, that was and one of the problems, like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, SGI did it to himself. Sad to see him go. But by the way, I still have two drives. The <laughs> legacy lives on. Legacy <laughs> XFS file system in yes. SGI. Woohoo! And um, using that right now to record. So nice. Those are on my crunch and scratch drives. But maybe if you want to relive the questionable old days, because uh, the desktop on SGI was motif, uh, motif, or you want to say motif or motive, yeah. <laughs> with a you know. A little special sauce to it, but it was very clean. It was very out of your way. And you can always play around with it with a Max Interactive desktop, which is still around mm. 211s yes. out. It's not abandoned wear, and you can get that retro classic. I love that. So pretty. You know, it works. It's functional. Like, this this speaks to me when I see this. This is what I grew up with. I mean, I, this is very after-step-ish, maybe. Yeah. You would want to say, but, you know, I grew up with a uh, CDE playing with that, and before that, Dash Shell, and just, I, I like clean, functional, I don't, I don't like whoosh it. Like, if I see yeah. a window, the GUI away. gets out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, it, and it's more memory efficient. It is. It's like when I see <laughs> shadows under a window, yeah. I'm like, that's wasting resources. I don't need a shadow under my window on my desktop. Why? Oh, I cut that off. Yeah. I cut that off. I'm that person. So. What do we have up next? Oh, right. Shameless self-promotion, ladies and gentlemen. If you yeah. like what we do, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We get a little patron. We got a bunch of stuff we throw your way. If you can help us out, we do appreciate it. Get this show in uh, just like straight up podcast format, the live and uncut series video. Access to our Discord where we're hanging out the other six days of the week. A bunch of other stuff. I got a post up right now for patrons. For an audio interface, if you get any questions about it, because I haven't started filming. I'm still writing the script for it script it's me writing a script i write this big long script and i look at it like three times when i'm recording it like glance at it that's me writing a script um if you have any questions and thoughts you know things i'm not going to think about to ask hit me up because i want to get all that film before i take it apart because mm. that's when it might not ever go back together 
And I, I say that about every single thing because I always take stuff apart at the end of the video because why, why not? Let's see. Um, new patron this week, Joe Bryant. New patron? Yeah. Who's our new patron? It just popped up on the screen. and I, I didn't It's been see. there the whole time. Right, oh, right, right okay. in the show notes. <laughs> or wait. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> A returning, yes. Dance your way out of that. <laughs> a returning patron, yes. So Kaijori, yes, he's he's under the new name, uh, Kaijori in chat, but otherwise known as Kai Linux. We've known him for years. <laughs> so uh, he sent me this mini and very cute and great sounding, powerful penguin speaker, uh, Bluetooth speaker from my Amazon wish list. And look at how small it is. But it's amazing. It's a, a it's a, it has a little subwoofer in it, and it sounds spectacular. <laughs> I had it connected to our TV in the living room, and when Steve came home, I had to tell him where he was listening to the sound. He was quite impressed with this little thing. <laughs> Basically, and, if you got something that small, it means it's easy to hide. Yeah, yeah, easy to hide, but they have gotten so good with these little Bluetooth speakers, and this one's chonky. It's heavy. Yeah, you can throw it's that a, at Steve. Yeah. He won't he he even hear it coming. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so sweet is, you know, Kai Linux, he sent all of us some goodies, and you talked about it, of course, on LGC Weekly on Saturday. And uh, so he's, he's, he's been gifting us goodies, and I wanted to read his little note. Um, he sent us also, you know, he sent the email on LGC Weekly that uh, Ven and Jordan and Pedro read. But here's the note I got. He says, hi, Jill. Thank you for all the news and the hospitality back at the Southern California Linux Expo 18X. From Kaijori, formerly Kai Linux. Yay. And we had such a wonderful time when he was with us at, uh, at scale. We even got him um, on the show. Uh, and, and Ven and Jordan Pedro uh, talked to him. When we did a show from uh, Scale 18X, we also did a show from Scale 17X. But that was a, a lot of fun. It was a, a, a joy getting to meet him, and he brought his girlfriend along, and it was, it was really fun. It was so fun hanging out with him. And he even did, while I was doing interviews for LWW, he filmed me doing interviews on his YouTube channel. So that was cool. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> Yeah, we do thank you thank for your you, support. Kai. I guess that's a uh, head over to likesgamecast.com. We got a bunch of stuff over there. We got Amazon wish list, and you too can make us say silly things on this. It's a horrible idea. Uh, we have <laughs> one for the studio. Jordan has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. Um, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. We do appreciate it. Let's us get fun little things for the show and stuff to talk about. And I do appreciate the uh, Presona Studio 24C because I think people mm -hmm. will be able to get use out of it. Yeah. That, Definitely. That, that's where we're going to be at with that. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, I do want to thank Mir for uh, resubbing on Twitch as well. Yeah, he did. Thank you, Mir. There you go. Look at that. That wasn't too mm -hmm. painful. No mattress ads. Yeah. <laughs> now, the great Raspberry Pi shortage is coming to an end, Jill. Yes, let's hope. <laughs> so this is something, you know, we've been talking about here a lot on LWW almost every week for the last few years. And since the pandemic hit and hardware short shortages abound, unfortunately, where are all the Raspberry Pis? <laughs> well, as easy, even Upton said last year, the Raspberry Pi shortage may be coming to an end in, in this year. Yay, hopefully. So the Raspberry Pi company put together 750,000 Raspberry Pi units in the first quarter of the year and is on track for building 2 million units the second quarter, helping it you know, fill backlogged orders and paving the way for unconstrained supply during the remaining half of the year. Oh, this is wonderful news. But don't expect to get your hands on a decent priced Raspberry Pi 4 <laughs> until the end of the year. And uh, I was just so thrilled to hear this. We've been waiting, and me and Ven has been, been talking about this for a long time. And uh, Ven, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> Love it, Jill. Everything's perfect. All is fine. 
<laughs> we must celebrate the return of the... Seriously? No, you can think about this, though, man. Two million units planned. Maybe we get it this year. Maybe we'll get it this year. It's two million units planned for us, not the industry that have, uh, you know, business to business that have been getting them. Yeah. These past couple of years. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Jill in the pre-show about this, and like, are we going to get excited about four-year-old hardware coming back to MSRP? Yeah. I mean, it's four-year-old tech. Uh, we've moved on in the SBC space. Things are way faster now with way more memory with NVMe. All this stuff's built yeah. into it. And, you know, Raspberry Pi trying to come back at like 75 bucks for an 8 gig. I'm like, mm, maybe 50? Uh, 75 seems a bit high. But that's what I'm curious to see how it shakes out. You know, yeah. what's going to be there? Because what we want to see, I'm going to say, as the hobbyist, people involved in education, is Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, we don't want to is. see the retro Raspberry Pi 4 because mm -hmm. it's vintage hardware in the real world, um, <laughs> you know, where we have the banana pies. We got all this rock chip based stuff. Orange pies. Right. Pi and 64. I've talked about yeah. it and Jill's talked about it. The ecosystem, you know, for the past couple of years past couple of years people didn't stop mm -hmm. they didn't you couldn't you just couldn't buy a compute module you couldn't get a hold of raspberry pi 4 for under 200 dollars. that ecosystem has been built out for other projects those seeds have already been planted people don't go backwards you know once yeah, you've already bought into a new wait. ecosystem yeah you think about yeah. it you think about it and a good analogy is like um You've already bought into this one ecosystem. Let's say you bought into your Android, right? Well, your mobile device. And Android's like, oh, you can't use your Android anymore for two years. And you're like, well, fine, I'll buy an iPhone and I'll start using the Apple stuff. And two years later, Google's like, hey, we're back on again. And you're like, I, I've already bought this other thing, man. <laughs> like, why? Where's the value add? Like, yeah. I'm just back on again. Like, well, that's cool. I've already got this other thing. Might as well roll with it. I don't know how it's going to shake out. I, I don't. Yeah. And it's a hard one. I want everything to work out, but I, I don't have any. Like, I, it's hard to get behind any particular thing, especially with a shortage. I mean, the, the best thing to come out of it is having that, having excess stock for the people who need the Raspberry Pis and then are looking for it. Yeah. But also maybe the realization of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the company, going we might have to really send you a product at a better price to compete yeah. with these other guys, which will be good for everyone. Yeah, competition. And maybe then we'll get the Raspberry Pi 8 gig ones now standard. That would be nice. <laughs> and it, that would be great. <laughs> it's weird. It's ridiculous. You know, you would think um, by this time you'd be able to get a Raspberry Pi like 8 gig for a couple of bucks, you know, like 45, 50 bucks. I don't think it's a... In, hmm, mm -hmm. it, it shakes confidence too. Like I, you, you brought up like it educational does. facilities, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking about like if I'm doing a purchase order for a district, and I was like, you guys weren't able to make hard. And I'm not picking on anybody. This is just what happens. I'm thinking, Raspberry Pi wasn't able to make a product. I wasn't able to buy from them for two going on three years. Yeah. Do I risk mm -hmm. buying from that company again? Yeah, so true. Because that's a real yeah. risk. That's reality. It's like, I, 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 got, I got children to educate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I hope everything is like, it just works out and it's good and everything's happy. But I think there's some like real world lessons. And, but I mean, for the Raspberry Pi, this might sound crass. The hobbyists and enthusiasts aren't really their customers anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I said this about NVIDIA. When it comes to something. People like me and Jill, people are doing like, you know, yeah. small content production gaming. We're not NVIDIA's customers anymore. NVIDIA just released $240,000 a pop. Yeah. GPU <laughs> NVIDIA. Yeah. We're, AI we're, market. And, yeah. <laughs> we're not even a rounding error. They're like, take yeah. what we give you and be happy with it. And I'm not saying this necessarily feels like this, but it's hard to get excited about three, four year old hardware coming back. And I, is it going to come back at? 2019 pricing 
I was like, yeah, that'd be $75. Know, that's, yeah. That's, what if it comes back no. at $100? <laughs> Optimism. But, hope for the best. Prepare yeah. for the worst. <laughs> I, I know. And it's just... You know, the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, as me and Ven have talked about, has, it's just, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, thanks to the Raspberry Pi Foundation and all their efforts and all the good tutorials you can download. And so that's why, you know, the schools really latched onto it. And it, they, they still have the best tutorials for the kids. <laughs> so it's, but the Orange Pi and Banana Pi and Pine 64s, they're all getting better at that because well, it comes we down to have. that like hey my android yeah. phone hasn't been working for the past couple of years so i need to start writing <laughs> guides on how to use this iphone thing so then, yeah. then you start building the guides and the ecosystem for that for the other ecosystem then the android phone comes yeah. back on and you're like I'm, I'm already writing guides for this now see you, you get to, it's hard to explain to somebody mm -hmm. who, because we're so focused on the immediate you know we have difficulty thinking like a year out and i'm like now you need to think eight to ten years out the yeah. knock-on effects of how this spreads out, or even five years out, and look at it like that. And it's a different landscape than what we got right now from oh, definitely. a blip like this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I, I hope, you know, it, it, they're able to come back. I know. Well, I hope they're I've able worked... to come back for us. They're yeah, already for back. Us. They, they never went anywhere for Yeah, business. for the biz big businesses and, <laughs> right. and yeah. For robotics and whatnot, uh, I, I want yeah. to be able to like, hey, again for them, right? Yeah, absolutely. We want to want to cheer for the incredible Raspberry Pi. <laughs> you know, change the world, and we need to keep that momentum going. <laughs> Definitely, really feature complete, high powered, low cost SBCs for the common yeah. person. Yeah, and all different models and makes and sizes. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that was its strength, was its flexibility. Affordability. To fit into anything, and affordability to fit into anything. Being able to get like that $35, because, you know, SP, single, you know, small boards existed way before Raspberry Pi, but Raspberry Pi came out and they're like, this thing's 30 bucks. Like, what? You can get that for 30 bucks. Yeah. Get, you can hook it up. It's a computer for 30 bucks. Neat. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, things are, things have changed. Yeah. Things have changed. Uh, and even Unfortunately, things, the pandemic did that to all of us. <laughs> things have changed because they of had that. to learn a lot of stuff. They had yeah. to learn a lot of stuff. And <laughs> it's hard to get goodwill back. That's yeah. that's me as an outside observer, man. Like I, I got my Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi's, I'm fine. But as it <laughs> gotta build that goodwill back up somehow. Now we need to talk about sound guards, Jill. Yeah. Yes. This. Oh, that's a PCI one. <laughs> this is the best I could find. I had to look yeah. around. <laughs> I should have got my IS, I, ISA ones out. <laughs> Remember the uh, little three, got a little game port? Yes. What do we got in, on this guy? We got, uh, we got mic in, we got line. Uh, line in and, and uh, got sound one out. Line in, we got two line outs for one and two. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> This is a Sound Blaster something or something. I'm probably like an it's all 32. A, I was going to say an all 32 because it's could a be PCI. an all 16. Yeah. Not beyond the uh, <laughs> back in the day. We used to have to buy sound cards. We yes, we did. Now, <laughs> I have another PCI Express sound card that we used for the show for a long time. It's called an RME 9632, but yeah. Um, it's one of those cards that would anger and confuse an audio file because it's an actual high end audio card. Um, but <laughs> before PCI, we had this thing called ISA, and it looked like PCI, except it was wider and chalkier, mm -hmm. but Chunky. we still needed sound cards for DOS. We did, and we want to bring that back. I don't know why you'd want to bring that back, but man, let's do it anyway. Yes. Pico Gus. <laughs> ISA sound card emulation, and it does require a Raspberry Pi, but fortunately, this version of the project requires a Raspberry Pi that you can still buy the Pico. Let's scroll down and take a look at this red chonky boy. Yeah, look at that look PCB. That. Yeah, right next to one of those red flavored ultra sounds, man. Yes, you know, <laughs> beautiful. This thing's able to emulate um, Gravis, Tandy, AdLib, Game Blaster. Might do Sound Blaster at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. There's a question mark next to that. It's it's no promises type thing. DMA support's not perfect just yet, but it's awfully close. 
And the entire bill materials for one of these, it's about 30 bucks, plus whatever it's going to cost you to get the PCB printed if you don't want to like break out the etch it, take it home and do it yourself. Now, the original version of this maybe looks a little bit familiar. This is what the original version was. This, is, yeah. this required a Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3. Didn't really look like a sound card CD. You didn't want to put it in your hipster retro vintage gaming rig with like three pieces of wood stickers on it. No, 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 <laughs> no. Now this kind of looks the part, you know. You can plug it in. It's got the ports on the back. Everything you would expect. And yes, yes, yes. it can run Doom. Doom, yes, of course. <laughs> I just thought this was kind of neat. and yeah. No, it did not inspire me to go find my etchant take and uh, start developing PCBs again. But welcome mm-hmm. to 2023, where you can send off and get a stack made for, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Yeah, and that was smart that he used uh, uh, the Pico, because those are still available. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. It's the one that you can buy, right? Yeah, it's the one that you can buy. <laughs> and, you know, this is honestly really awesome, considering how much the Gravis ultrasound sound cards go on ebay these days i i looked um just uh yesterday the i the lowest i found was 420 dollars, and they go way up from there and they used to be very expensive when they came out that's why most of us didn't have one and uh i actually do have one in a machine but it's it it d- didn't work it was a hand-me-down machine from someone and it, and it it had been fried so <laughs> i do need a working one <laughs> This is something I wish all manufacturers would do is plastic. Yeah. Brackets. Yeah. Plastic brackets. Because then we can get all pretty colors, huh, Finn? Like this lime green one. I was thinking from an engineering standpoint. But yeah. yes, <laughs> as, as, a, as a maybe not the primary focus, you would also get pretty colors. Yes. Um, the, you, you can't do it because of like a E, C, C, whatever the regulation thing. It's the grounding. I looked it up because yeah. I was like, this is dumb. Why don't we do Because I have done that, but I've done it with tape or uh, plastic spray. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, I'm not even going to tell anybody that that's a possible thing. Nothing I just said really happened. Um, But yeah, I I like that option. Also, don't be surprised if you get electric boarded by doing Mm -hmm. that occasionally. Really cool project. Really happy to see it. And yeah, I mean, if you got like an old box laying around, it's and it does MIDI too. Yes. You you, you can uh, get those high quality beeps and boops. With your uh, Roland and put it in there. All right. Ah, can I put some mods and S3Ms in there too as well? I don't <laughs> know. Like <Trackers>. sound cards, <laughs> they're not completely dead. You know, Sound Blaster still makes sound cards. Oh, yeah. Very good ones too. Uh, <laughs> they make external, they're, they've gotten really good at the external USB ones, internal ones, and internal. Yeah, both. They got internals, mm-hmm. and uh, who else makes internal sound cards? Now, I this show, we're, what we're recording right now, is on a sound card from 2021. Mm-hmm. We're recording through a sound card. PCIe yeah, Express Asus, sound card. Asus still makes some PCIe sound cards. Mm. I have one of them. What mm-hmm. types of uh, cards do they make? Mm, uh, uh, sound Blaster knockoffs. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, uh, see, this is a sound guard we have in the studio. Oh, okay. It looks like a popover. RME, mm-hmm. reject. Looks a little bit different than a normal sound guard, but you know, yeah. it's, it, you plug in breakout cables. It's got your ins and outs. It's even got a headphone jack and it's got some, but it's still an internal sound guard, which is. Yeah. There's the coax in there, I see. The uh, yeah. coax. Light. <laughs> oh, you, you mean the... the light pipes? Yeah, the light pipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is one. Uh, Not the coax, me, old coax, but. It the, is the, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, that is a very confusing. Um, it is. <laughs> because that, traditionally, that port, what we're talking about, is like the ones that say in and out. Yeah. So you see that, and you're probably thinking, like, I think most people, general populace, when you see that, you're thinking spitif. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, optical out that you would plug into, like, your uh, subwoofer or whatever for your yeah. home systems. Now, that port came about with ADAT machines, which were able to record eight tracks individually, digital to tape. Oh, so yeah. that's where that format came from. 
for ADAT, and but that port was co-opted by a Toshiba. What they made it, they, the toss link, mm-hmm. whatever. It's all interchangeable, though. I can turn that from yeah. an ADAT port to a regular toss link connection, no problem. And then we can get in. They can't do AES, but then you get into like SMUX capabilities and stuff like that because the original one was only capable of forty eight k. I could bore you to death because I roll deep when it comes to audio yeah. kids, and we're not going to do that <laughs> <Yes>. instead. <laughs> we're going to yes. cue some music <laughs> okay. and roll some credits. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the coax had the. Oh my! Yeah, well, that the coax was, they is had the... no different. Coax yeah. is just a metal cable version of that. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember hooking up coax uh, uh, sound systems. <laughs> My 5.1 <laughs> sound system. Uh, thank you to all our awesome patrons, including our executive producers. We have our Theron, who's our advisor. We have our Chicago Kicks people <laughs> level, our sea monsters. Uh, thank you once again to Kai Jory also for sending us some goodies i love them and to all our wonderful chairlings all of our beautiful party people thank you yes. for showing up hanging out with us doing the thing we do each and every saturday you listening after the fact that's cool but if you get a chance come see us next yes. week right back here <laughs> all right everyone get out there and uh don't throw a penguin at somebody unless they yeah. ask you really <laughs> nicely especially if it's a penguin speaker <laughs> Penguin speaker. <laughs>